Alright guys, I'm going to talk to you real quick about a site I picked up today. This is the Razer VBT by Trueglow. Here we have it right here. Now, it comes in nice, attractive packaging. This one I, I find online for between $70 and $80. I paid $20 for this because of the package damage. Packaging was tore up and damaged, but anyway. So, Razer VBT by True Glow. It's Vertical Blade Technologies. Virtual fiber image identifies boat torque. This is basically the same concept as the IQ site with retina lock. Single vertical sight plane improves accuracy. Mirror polished stainless steel blade. Let's remember that one. Individually adjustable aiming dots. No exposed fiber optics. And removable rheostat light included. So I'm going to kind of take a look at it here. And this is basically how all heads up technology works for the most part. Very attractive packaging, nice holographic. <clears throat> Alright, let's move on to the site. We'll start with fit and finish. Fit and finish overall, this is solid, solid metal pretty heavy sight more so than most other of your polymer sites on the market but fit and finish overall is very nice with one exception and that's let's see if I can get it here and the bottom of this sight glass for the level you kind of see that white junk it's a. Uh, in my opinion, they used way too much glue to get that sight glass to stay in there, and it uh when you're sighting down it 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 stands out and it kind of adds a feel of cheapness to it. But other than that, my only complaint being fit and finish. Overall, solid built, really nice sight. Seems like it's gonna last a while. Let's talk real quick about the Rheostat light. This is the Rheostat light that came with it. Very lightweight, but very well built. With one exception. And let's turn it on. So, this is the light that comes with it. And here we have a light from Trophy Ridge. Now, let's turn on the Trophy Ridge light. It's kind of hard to do with one hand. So, immediately we can see a significant difference in brightness. Trophy Ridge light is much, much brighter. much brighter now it says on the back of the packaging here please note that the light is not required in normal shooting conditions including dusk and dawn I'll talk about that in a minute but let's look at to where this rheostat light plugs into So the rheostat light, and I do like this feature quite a bit, actually goes down into the sight housing. So like some companies like Trophy Ridge on some of their sites, you know, it'll sit up here hanging off the top. Well, that's not the case with this. It actually screws down into the housing itself. So there you have it. Now I'm going to flip it on so you can see it. You can kind of see it glowing down there. Not really very bright. Now, well, I'll list some features about this site first off that I like very much. I like this ring right here. This luminescent ring. This thing charges up very quick from ambient light. And it will glow for a while. And it glows in extremely bright. Enough so that it lights up the sight glass. 
So in the dark, you get an excellent, excellent picture of the level because of the glow coming from this ring. Very nice feature with the glowing outer circle. Very nice feature with this rheostat light being able to sink down into the housing there. Now we'll cover real quick adjustments before we move on any further. We have an L and A. The L is for lock, the A is adjust. This adjusts what's referred to as the third axis, which is basically twisting this side left and right. So you would back that one all the way out, and then you would simply turn this right or left and it will rotate this that way or this way, depending on which way you turn it. Then when you get your adjustment done, you go ahead and lock that back down. <clears throat> now, let's look at the sight picture here. So here we see the sight pins, and if you come to the side of the housing, that's another bad thing too about the light that comes with it, is you can't really tell when it's turned off. Because it's not very bright at all. So we'll uh, get it turned off here. There we go. It's weird, it's like 80% of it is on and then it'll just tiny, tiny, tiny bits off. Alright, so here we have our sight picture of our projected dots. And here is where the fiber optic cable sit. You can see them glowing back there. So, this is the picture you'd have when you're shooting. Now let's go over some problems with this. First of which being these, and I'm underneath a significantly bright light here. In normal room lighting, these dots almost completely disappear. Very faint. Now, if you were to say, I don't know, be in a bad lighting situation, as you can see, these dots easily disappear. And then once they do disappear, the problem you have, like right there, you can kind of barely see them. And of course, once you get farther away, they basically disappear and you're left with a flat blade. Overall, these glow brightly but they don't glow nearly as brightly as they need to to give a proper reflection. And it's the razor, it's, call it a razor. It literally is a piece of stainless steel with a bevel cut into it and a mirror polish on that bevel surface. So overall, these things could serve to be significantly bright because as you move out from and there you go, you can kind of see them starting to wash out already. And once again, we still have that nice big light source up there. But, there we go, we'll find them. And as you move further away, they kind of disappear off into the background. Now remember, when you're out at full draw, you're going to be out here. So you have barely any visibility on the dots. It just doesn't glow bright enough, to be honest with you. On paper, I'm sure this works great. In a controlled setting, this sight works great, but once you take it outside, it's, and your mileage may vary, but it's almost completely useless in my opinion. Now we have a lot of extra room here, so why they didn't include uh, a lot more fiber optic cable is anyone's guess. That's one thing I think they should have done is increase the length of these cables significantly. So we'll take a look real quick at this rheostat light before we move on. So I'm going to try and balance this and turn this light on. So right now, the light's on. So on, or off, on. No difference in brightness. But here's something I did notice. 
You can pull out the rheostat that came with it. Take a trophy ridge. And it's basically the same outer diameter because of this ring right here. Take your trophy ridge light. And the trophy ridge plugs right into it. And it even fits it better in my opinion because it sinks in even further. So there's the trophy ridge. <clears throat> now let's take a look at it. Um, there we go. Let's see the light there. And let's turn on the trophy ridge. Oh, look at that. Now we're cooking. Now we got a nice, nice bright picture. So now, even as we move away, look at that. You can actually still see your sight pins. The trophy ridge light and this sight are just a match made in heaven. You can see the trophy ridge is obviously significantly brighter. This is what it takes to get a decent illumination, honestly. Now, to my number one flaw for this light, or this sight, you have a surface that's mirror polished. What happens when you take a mirror into sunlight and try and look into it? You get blinded. When you take this sight outside into the sunlight, what I found is that this dark surface that the dots sit on right now is actually polished silver. So in the shadows it's nice and dark. But when you get out into sunlight, this surface right here goes from this nice black you see to basically a nice shiny reflective surface. And it completely washes out your dots. And then of course the further out you extend, when you're at full draw, it's basically like this. It completely washes out any hope of seeing your sight pins. Now I was at the range today and I spent about 15 minutes trying to adjust this and I was able to get a rough adjust on my 20 yard pin here. But that was it. After about 15 minutes I gave up because I spent more time trying to maneuver myself to block out the ambient light so that I could actually see these dots on this blade than I did actually think about shooting. If I have a sight, I want to be able to use it without thinking about it. This sight I found when you're outside and outdoors, all the ambient light and the sunlight reflects off this surface and turns it from this dark color to a nice reflective color. Now imagine trying to see, you know, a green and a red dot shining on something like this. It's virtually impossible. And then once you get it out further, you start getting it up against some different colors and whatnot as you're acquiring your targets. It just basically washes out the bar. So to me, this side is completely useless in my opinion. Uh, I just got it today and I'll be getting rid of it tomorrow. So some things that probably should have been thought of when they first made this is you have a lot of extra space. Why not use it for fiber optic cables? Secondly, if you're going to put a mirror polish surface, let try and get it in the light here. If you're going to put a mirror polish surface on something like that, you can see the see a little uh, reflection. If you're going to put a mirror surface on something. I mean, Trugal is a decent company. They've been around for a while. They have a lot of engineers working for them, yet nobody's seen a problem with this. To make this work and practical, I'm going to guess you're going to need about a 3-inch hood that extends off of it. So that way, no matter where the sun is or how bright it is outside, you have a hood coming off of this to shroud this blade and keep it in the shadows so that it stays that nice black color and it doesn't start reflecting light back at you. To me, this is completely unusable just because of that fact right there. Like I said, I'm sure it looks good on paper, looks good in a controlled room, and practicality, completely worthless. The fiber optic cables aren't bright enough to put a proper reflection on here in the daytime, 
and I found how I got my 20 yard pin zeroed was by using this Trophy Ridge rheostat light. I had to use that in broad daylight. And that was able to, as you see there, overcome the washout. So is this light required in the daylight? Package says no. I found that it is. And this is this is the type of sight that you'd always want your rheostat light mounted on permanently. Because once it gets under normal wood lighting condition, you're going to be looking like that. And uh, good luck trying to see those pins from way out here. Good idea in thought, terrible idea in design. There's not one review of this online on YouTube, and the only reviews I can find are advertisement reviews for it. So I just wanted to give an actual real opinionated review real quick, and this is just my opinion. You may buy it, have 20, 20, 20, 20 vision and be able to see it. My vision is not the best, but at the same time, it's not the worst. But I just, it's washed out. Like I said, the main problem, guys, is this is a silver mirror polish, and it catches all of the ambient light around you. And that black surface reflects light and turns into this surface, and you just can't see your pin sights. So this will be going away tomorrow. I would like it. I'd like to use it because I really like it. It's a nice, solid, well-built sight. But you can't see anything with it. So we'll cover the... Real quick, we'll cover the controls. Once again, like I said, you have your L which is lock, your A is adjust. This is what adjusts your blade. Right here you have your horizontal and then down inside of this hole you also have your vertical. Now another con that I'll note with this light is you have your two sight pins on this side, two sight pins on this side. If you don't have any anger problems you will after you try and adjust these sight pins I don't know if it's the design of the housing or the way they're mounted or what, but the sight pins are next to impossible to move. This one like literally took me 15 minutes or so to work up that high. Trying everything in the book. What happens is when you start lifting it, the top rotates down and that screw mount goes up. So when you're trying to raise it, you're actually wedging it lower. So you kind of got to stick the allen in there and it's a pain in, in the butt decent sight is it worth the eighty dollars it sells for online in my opinion just because of the simple fact that in the real world outdoors these dots are completely washed out so no and like i said i like the idea behind it it's the same as the iq with the retina lock it basically shows if you're torquing your bow only the IQ with right a lot goes about it a lot better way than this Trugolo here. So if it were a toss up between the two, since they're similar sights, I'd go with the IQ all day and skip over the Trugolo. But that's the review for the Trugolo Razor VBT. Awesome sight, just in the daytime. This turns silver. Can't see crap. So I just wanted to throw that in there real quick before I get rid of it tomorrow. Alright guys, thanks for watching.